Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a problem that was posted on Twitter recently and generated a lot of discussion. The problem comes from Timothy Gowers, who is a mathematician at Collage de France and the University of Cambridge. He was also awarded the Fields Medal in 1998. The Fields Medal is considered the Nobel Prize for a mathematician. So he posts, here's a puzzler for my daughter's maths homework. How many degrees inside the following shapes? Triangle, rhombus, circle, and pentagon. So to many people, this may not even seem like a controversial question. So the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. The sum inside of a rhombus, which is a four-sided quadrilateral, is 360 degrees. Then let's skip ahead to pentagon, which will be 540 degrees. But then we get to the question of the circle. Your natural instinct might be to write 360 degrees because there are 360 degrees in a circle. However, if you think about the question as it's stated, which is to find out the number of degrees inside the following shapes, you might be thinking this question is referring to the sum of the interior angles of a circle, in which case you might think the answer is infinity. In fact, this is what his daughter put down and what many mathematicians were saying should be the correct answer. So to understand where this answer of infinity comes from, let's take a step back. The measure of a straight line is 180 degrees. What is the sum of the interior angles of a triangle? We will solve this problem with a clever construction that's been known since ancient times. Construct a line that goes through the bottom side of the triangle. According to the postulates of Euclidean plane geometry, we can then construct a unique parallel line that goes through the top point of this triangle. We now have alternate interior angles on both sides of the top angle. So the left angle of this triangle on the bottom is equal to this angle on the top. The same thing is true. The bottom right angle is equal to this angle on the top. We can now see that the three angles of the triangles have exactly a sum that's equal to that of a straight line. Therefore, the three angles sum up to 180 degrees. Notice this is true no matter how we draw this triangle. we will always have the sum of the three interior angles is equal to 180 degrees. We can then build from this to figure out the formula for a general polygon. So we have a triangle will have a sum of interior angles equal to 180 degrees. Now what about a quadrilateral? The clever trick is to divide this with two opposite vertices. We now have divided this quadrilateral into two different triangles. This triangle will have a sum of its interior angles equal to 180 degrees, and the same is true for this triangle. So the total sum of the interior angles of this quadrilateral will be the same as two triangles, which is 180 plus 180, which equals 360 degrees. If we go to a five-sided pentagon, we can divide it up into three different triangles and each of the triangles will have a measure of 180 degrees. So the total interior angle sum in a pentagon will be equal to 540 degrees. So when n is equal to three for the number of sides, the interior angle sum is 180. When n is equal to four, we have 360. When n is equal to five, we have 540 degrees. So each time we increase n, we need to add 180 degrees. So we can easily come up with a formula for a general n-sided polygon, and this will work out to be 180 degrees multiplied by the quantity n minus two. So if we take this idea, we start out with a polygon that has an interior angle sum of 180 degrees multiplied by n minus two, we can see how this will keep increasing as the number of sides n keeps increasing. But as we take the limit as n goes to infinity, 
this polygon is going to approach the shape of a circle. So it would suggest that the sum of the degrees inside the circle has to be a number that keeps growing infinitely large. So this is the justification that the answer is infinity. So now let's return to the homework question. Timothy Gower's daughter did put infinity as the number of degrees inside the circle. He then posted an update a few days later. Update, the mystery is now solved. The answer to the question is 360. My daughter put infinity, which was marked wrong, so she got 39 out of 40 on the homework. But that is how you learn. Many people were upset with the grading. They felt that either infinity should have been accepted as the correct answer, or the question could have been thrown out because it was poorly phrased. But I want to offer one more perspective. This whole exercise got me thinking, why do we say the number of degrees in a circle is 360 degrees? And does this question actually make any sense? So let's go back to a basic fact. We started out with our derivation by saying a line measures 180 degrees. I could trace this back to Euclid, who said that a line that is divided exactly in half is equal to two right angles, which nowadays we would say is 90 plus 90, which is 180 degrees. However, why is this 180 degrees? Why is this given as a fundamental measure? The answer traces back to a circle. Ancient societies, including the Sumerians, Babylonians, Egyptians, Indians, Chinese, and Mayans, were studying astronomical features and noticed the year was about 365 days. They noticed a circular pattern about this, and it was convenient to round this down to 360 and divide each day into a degree, so the circle became divided into 360 days, which is 360 degrees. It made sense to measure the angle of the arc in terms of this central angle. So one full turn around the circle was 360 degrees and you could subdivide either this arc or you could divide the central angle by 360 degrees. So imagine you go halfway around the circle. This forms a straight line across the diameter. The measure of the central angle would have to be exactly half of 360 degrees, which is 180 degrees. So to get the chronology right, a circle is divided into 360 degrees. This is why it makes sense for a line to be 180 degrees. Then a triangle has the same interior angle sum as the line, which becomes 180 degrees. And all of the formulas for the polygons follow on this basis. So it is the circle of 360 degrees that's the fundamental measure. So we now go back to the homework question and think about the phrasing. People are thinking about what is the meaning of degrees inside? Well, for the triangle and the rhombus and the pentagon, inside is referring to the sum of interior angles. But in a circle, it would refer to the measure of its central angle. So you would say you're using one word to mean two different things, which should never happen in mathematical homework. This is a poorly phrased question. It should never be allowed. But I want to offer another perspective. Think about the sentence, there is no time like the present to present a friend with a present. We have one instance where present refers to a time, another instance where it refers to an action of giving, and a final instance of the word where you're actually giving a physical or otherwise emotional object. So we have a single word that has three different meanings in the same sentence. I would say many of you should understand this question without any difficulty. It's not a problem if you're using the same word to have multiple meanings even in the same sentence. That's just a part of life. Now, since we're talking about language, I pose this question to AI. So Gemini, I said, how many degrees are inside a circle? And the response was there are 360 degrees inside a circle. This is a fundamental measurement in geometry. In fact, Gemini got tripped up with the other question. How many degrees are inside a triangle? The response was a triangle itself doesn't hold degrees inside it. However, there's an interesting fact about the angles of a triangle 
the sum of the degrees of all interior angles in any triangle will always be 180 degrees. So if you look at Gemini, which is based on a large language model, it was actually able to parse out that the degrees inside a circle are different than the degrees inside a triangle, and it was able to come up with the right answer. I pose the same question to ChatGPT. How many degrees are inside of a triangle? The total number of degrees inside a triangle is always 180 degrees. This property is known as the angle sum property of triangles. No matter the size or shape of a triangle, the sum of its interior angles will always be equal to 180 degrees. I then pose the question, how many degrees are inside a circle? A circle does not have interior angles in the same way that polygons do. Instead, a circle is made up of infinitely many points and any angle formed inside a circle would be measured in radians rather than degrees. However, if you're referring to the central angle of a circle, it's measured in degrees and the central angle of an entire circle is 360 degrees. So for me, I think it is fair game to ask how many degrees are inside a polygon or inside a circle, although degrees inside would have different meanings in those different contexts. But I pose the question to you. Do you think this question was fair and what answers would you have given? Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.